Morning here in Camp Macetators. We still are the undisputed kings of this island. We're still hearing a lot of traffic from that way, a lot of bombing from that way. And today is where it's all going to go bad. Do you know why? It is because this morning, Taters booked an Airbnb for tomorrow night. That means the universe is gonna throw everything at us to make that not happen because the universe hates a plan. Oh, whoa, Yay. that is jeez. <laughs> So that side of the island actually had a flatter grassy area. I just didn't like it because we were basically staring over at some fishermen on the far side. And this is where the bombing's coming from. And this is where we are. Surprisingly, we are not covered in ticks, which is what I would expect being in the vegetation that, that we know about. There could be lots of deer ticks in our butt cracks or something, and we wouldn't see them. That is a look of approval that you can't see because she dove under the other side. She, she loves my illusions and things. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, as far as stealth camps, this was pretty much ideal because the only house or something was right over there. The uh, fishing area was right over there. We also are perfectly good on sandbars but this was a little too low. If one of those dams starts letting out water, we didn't want to be underwater. Now it seemed to be in drought condition, so that's probably not likely, but discretion, valor, etc. That was why I didn't want to be out on that open grassy spot. I uh, tend to be paranoid, much more so than Jen. So that orange strap that you see sometimes is a phone tether, which uh, works decently. I don't trust it as much as the Facebook ads, do where they're like sitting on the edge of the cliff and they start like helicoptering it. <laughs> Only problem is this tends to block one of the camera lenses on my phone. Hence why every now and then you catch sight of a little orange blur to the side. I am still really liking the seat. I originally bought that one with just had a pad on the top thinking I would like the stowage. Um, when we tested it, it wasn't quite thick enough. Um, somebody recommended this one because you can lean back on it, which has been huge for me. Uh, biggest flaws with it, other than the pocket in the back could be a little bigger, is you get bit by mosquitoes through that, and this could actually use a fair amount more padding. <laughs> I've seen people using their sleeping pads and putting them across there just to get a little more butt cushion. And yes, everybody's thinking it, I should have plenty of butt cushion, but eh. So we've mostly seen dead ones other than uh, Big Winnie where we were seeing hundreds below the water, but there you go, three fish. And we are off, leaving our little island behind, paddling off into doom because somebody had to go book an Airbnb. So we've got two days for the universe to completely screw us over and mess up our plans. What's the chance of that happening? That hasn't happened until like, when did you say that? Oh, at least the rain missed us. 7 p.m. <laughs> yesterday and then everything soaking wet for like an hour. Yeah. Good talking, Jen. <laughs> Guess who drinks the coffee in this relationship? What? It's a good plan. Oh, hey, that's like four words. Look I at that. The storm yesterday was not that bad. <laughs> and as she says that, look what's up in the sky. So we do have the Sock Rapids up ahead, which is one of the things that I had heard about when I started looking into this last year. Good news is Tom and Jackie are out pacing us in their uh, kayaks. Um, they're pushing on trying to get to some repairs, I guess. So uh, they're going to hit it either late today, early tomorrow, so we should get some beta. Uh, Jen, you've got a rock straight ahead. Go a little to the right. It is a muggy morning per the weather forecast. We are proceeding from uh, storms back into heat. So overcast in the morning and then it's gonna get into the 90s. So this morning, the big challenge is just shallowness because this is fine, but we don't have much of a buffer before we start to scrape. And considering our Kevlar boat, we worry about hitting anything at speed and braking. It's not pleasant with the plastics, but there you never have to really worry. You can just ram into whatever you can, whatever you see. So these are all islands and we keep cutting down channels trying to avoid the shallowest bits. Uh, Tom and Jackie yesterday said they were hitting rocks left and right, warned us we'd probably have to walk our uh, boats through one section. Fortunately, Miss Somali Pirate back there can just like rudder us through all of these. Cause it's so shallow, my, my paddle is hitting rocks if I go in too deep. <laughs> it's good to be back in the stern where I could be in control. Uh-huh, weren't you happy to be up front because you could be power blondie? Uh, it was, you know, a nice variety, but I'm much happier back here, I think. I'm happier up here, I can get my feet up. There we go, mush blondie, faster blondie. 
actually she just likes it back there because you get the snack bag if you're in the back. <laughs> so I just found a tick on my mud boat and I got all excited and I just sat here and tried to drown it. Didn't seem to be working so I just uh, googled it. Turns out ticks take 72 hours to drown because they keep hair on their body with little air bubbles and they breathe. That's a cool adaptation. So then they can hug you underwater, yes. <laughs> the disturbing thing is it was one of the bigger ticks. Like those, I don't worry. Those are the good ticks. When I find one of those ones, I'm like, yes. I'm worried about the little guys. Apparently we need to bathe and I don't know, fire. That did work. Remember when I was burning them the first night to like actually kill them? Yeah, yeah and then more of them came and huddled around their dead brethren. And I was telling her that just means you can fry them all quicker. You, you can't squash them. So that's pretty much the only way to reliably kill them. Um, didn't want to do it when they were on the fuel canister because that had the chance to get a little too exciting. But. <laughs> I wouldn't run into that patch right there, Jen. We successfully made it to the county park for a bathroom break. Taters is currently looking for water. So as a person, I am highly entertained by signs and I love it when there it's like, okay, should we put the work in to fix the stairs? No, we're just gonna sign it as watch out and it'll be fine, we'll just leave that. Hey guys, masochist here. We found a way to save my shoulder. <laughs> The lake was so shallow we couldn't get the uh, paddles in. So um, yeah, Taters is just moving us right along here. I did <laughs> offer yesterday when the shoulder was so bad the day before to actually get in and just try and like kick behind the boat. Jen, not to be too critical, but could you like walk faster? <laughs> There's a coffee shop over there. This is why you don't go into the shallows, kids. Another big water crossing. But we are making progress against the headwind. There is a dam at some point, and that dam is within a block of a coffee shop. And now the funnest part of all these portages, figuring out where you're actually supposed to get off the water. So we could get out there, but that doesn't look like a very friendly landing. <laughs> so the maps that we have, they've literally been going the wrong way a couple of times and adding quite a bit of extra distance. Also, every time we get near a dam, it gets really exciting as the force of water goes over. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah. Right. And here's Tater standing by the boat, not like lifting the boat. It's okay, that power box weighs like a pound. No, it's fine. <laughs> So unfortunately, the water levels are making this harder than it necessarily needs to be. <laughs> yeah. And we are across. The biggest delay was actually me coming to terms the fact, with the fact there was no way I was getting a hazelnut latte. <laughs> and then I had a little bit of a crying jag, Jen sitting there sighing, rolling her eyes, you know. And I'm like, it's okay, Blondie, I will be the adult. Just get me like a sandwich and I will be good. And then she's like, no. So here we are. The part he left out is how hard he's been working to get episodes uploaded to YouTube. All morning long, he's been checking the internet whenever it looks like it's good. He'll try to upload one. He had to upload one twice because it got into some uh, weird like YouTube purgatory state because it was trying to upload on spotty internet. So he finally had good internet here and was able to get three and a half episodes uploaded. We were unable to get water at the uh, last park. And so Jen is currently running up to the Charles Lindbergh Museum to see if they'll let us fill. If not, she has to go to a state campground that's a little further up. Whew, that was a bit longer water run than usual. 26 miles up from the river to a campground. And now I get revenge for when Matt made fun of me trying to come pick him up on the log. I had to cross the river a couple times to, <laughs> to get turned around. Oh, there he goes. I, just, I, I can back up to you, I just don't want to slam it into the rock. Okay, orient to the right direction. Nice. Oh, honey, I know how to back up. <laughs> 
between Little Falls and Blanchard Dam, the river has basically been dammed up to make a really long lake, and unfortunately we ended up paddling into a stiff headwind, the sort where you just have to put your head down, keep paddling as hard as you can, and you can't even record. <laughs> we are approaching the Blanchard Dam. That was a very, very long nine miles since the Little Falls Dam. Going into the headwind was really tough. Matt really pulled out some powerful strokes on that last bit. I'm really hoping he didn't hurt his shoulder. We were very glad when we turned around the corner and finally saw the dam. As I was saying earlier, I respect a good sign and that is a good portage sign. <laughs> we were able to tell where to go. I think we might not be able to tell Blondie not to run into the stick, but uh -oh. three, two, whoa, oh, look at that. And what makes taters ever so happy after a portage up a little dam slope? Going down the down, down the damn dam slope right after. So we were warned this was a particularly difficult portage. So far, not too bad, as long as we can stay on this road. Well, this is going to be fun. So we got to come get the boat over to here, get it off the cart, carry it up go down to there, and then uh, there's enough of a sharp cut, we might be able to make the cart work. Oh, fun times. Now I see why they said this one was a pain. Next step, carry the canoe up the stairs. And this is just all sorts of entertaining. <laughs> there's a couple of sharp curves on here that make it very hard to do solo. <laughs> this is the funnest portage yet. Grand Rapids got nothing on this. That was walking down roads. At least there's mosquitoes also for that full Minnesota experience, you know, Jen? So I have tracks for these portages, which aren't 100% correct, because at least once they went the wrong way, but that did just save us from having to do something miserable down some steps. And yeehaw. Way to go, Matt! Woo! <laughs> I owe you a latte. And onwards and downwards. So it looks like Taters might have some PTSD because you see those rocks back there? She just insisted on like walking down the middle of the river through them all. I didn't want to hit any more things, okay? <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I don't want to kill anymore. <laughs> that was interesting. So I captured those two going across, but it looks like uh, that was mom and dad and they ran off from the uh, little baby. Hey, little guy. Oh, he's really young. He's got his like yearling spots. Oh, really small. And he learned an important lesson about mom and dad will just leave you. Yeah, look, he's, he's walking all funny. He is tiny. Uh, and Taters thought the animals were doing so well as far as no child endangerment. There were no paddle camps in this area, so once again, we were just having to find a stealth camp spot. We started looking around 9 p.m. And we think we might have an option here. Going for an island again. And we managed to find an island. Let's see how shallow everything is here. Uh, we're just gonna go up there on the vegetation. This is an example of something that's probably fine, um, other than I don't trust rivers not to rise. And here Blondie practices the second principle of leave no trace, called leave no trace of that bush. <laughs> that was a tough day. Tough paddle across big water with a headwind, tough portage. Highlights were definitely the morning and the late evening. The morning was in a nice pretty section and then the evening here was mostly really nice and quiet. Flowing current, other than that calm water baby deer running across the river. 
and we have a pretty nice little camp tucked in between some funnily shaped islands. Feels pretty calm and secluded back here. Home sweet home for the night.